they drew, and when everyone drew their first parabola shape, everyone drew it as a parabola, I think. And you say, look, that's what a projectile does. And I've, I've thrown objects through the air for my entire life. It makes a parabola, right? Except in mathematics, you have to be careful. Um, or rather, mathematics allows you to be careful because it looks like a parabola. But who says it actually is? Now, we've seen lots of clues that it should be, but in mathematics, we're not, you know, satisfied with clues. We want a proof. We want to be able to conclusively say, yeah, absolutely. It doesn't just look like one. It absolutely is. So here's what I'm going to do. Given some kind of initial condition, right? Now, by the way, I'm just going to distinguish. Um, usually, we'd say, like, some velocity, lowercase v, um, and some angle that I'm flying through the air, theta. But these are my initial conditions, okay? So just to make this nice and neat, rather than calling it like v naught or that kind of thing, I'm going to call it capital V for my angle of projection, sorry, my, in, my initial velocity, where I start, and alpha, because, you know, first letter, um, as my angle of projection where I begin. Now, after all your integration, when you start from acceleration, you climb up through velocity and to displacement, you're going to get these familiar equations over here, right? So I'm going to go Vt cos alpha. This is my initial condition, right? Versus here, I get my minus a half gt squared. Can you remind me why that is the case? As time progresses, what happens? You get more and more influence of gravity on your object, right? Until eventually it overcomes however much initial velocity you put in plus your vt sine alpha. Okay. Right, now, do you remember, we said, we drew this graph, like that graph, okay? And we said, you know, for normal displacement equations and, um, and graphs, we would say, well, look, you want to think about time, and you want to compare that to displacement. But we said, look, we're in projectile motion land now, right? We've got two dimensions of motions to think about. So this is not going to cut it anymore. I need to be able to use my vertical axis for vertical motion. So we said, that's not going to be stable. We said, this had better go back to being y, and this had better be x. Okay? Which is kind of nice, that's, that's the way we think of x. But then the problem was, well, what do we do with time? I can't draw another time axis. So people in the next one, we only looked at this very briefly. What did we say time was going to do? What role did it play in this arrangement? It's the parameter, right? It's this third other variable that's hiding behind the other two variables and defines what they are. Now. When you get, think back to when you were doing like parabolas and even the unit circle and that kind of thing. A natural thing to do when you've got a parameter is to try and eliminate it, right? Rather than having two parametric equations, wouldn't it be nicer if I just had a single equation which related what these two variables are? So when you want to do such a thing, when you want to eliminate a parameter and you've got two equations, what do you do? What do you do? Yeah, you want to do some kind of rearrangement so you can substitute and get rid of, well in this case, the parameter is t. So which of these equations do you think would be easier to rearrange so that you can eliminate t? Clearly the first one, right? So all I need to do, I just need to make t the subject, which means on both sides I'm going to divide through by v cos alpha, right? So that'll give me this. Okay, now given that, all I have to do is take that, substitute it into y, and see what happens. Now, this is a result not to be memorized, but we want to notice some interesting things about it and see how it can be applied. Okay, so firstly, let's just do the substitution, shall we? This is going to be y equals minus a half g, there's t, right? So this is going to be x on v cos alpha squared. Let's just finish this up. Uh, take away v, here's my thing again, right? Plus. x on. Yeah. Yeah? yeah, yeah, yeah. V cos alpha. And then I've got a sine alpha that was already hanging there from the initial question, right? Now, all I want to do, I don't want to do too much manipulation with this. I just want to tidy up a tiny little bit. Firstly, I notice g, v, and alpha, right? Number one, the v's cancel there. Number two, g and v and cos alpha, which I left behind, they're all constants. All constants, right? So I'm going to tidy this up just a tiny little bit. Here you can see I'm going to get minus, uh, I'm just going to put the g on the top, actually, on 2 v squared cos squared alpha. Do you agree? That's my coefficient. And then what's actually varying is x squared. Do you agree with that? Over here, being that my v's cancelled, what do I get left with is the coefficient. The coefficient, the constant is just tan alpha, right? 
That's the thing that's actually just whatever you're given alpha is, I'll get a value for that, times x. So you look at this. This is a quadratic in x, right? And so, yeah, it doesn't just look like a parabola. It actually is. Once you sift out, you evaluate, you get some numbers out. Okay? Now, that's the first thing I want to point out. Yeah, it doesn't just look like a parabola. It is. Finally, the nice thing about this is, if I know what this equation is, then come on, we're in calculus land, right? The natural thing to do with an expression like this is to differentiate them. Now, why would it be useful to differentiate it? Firstly, what is the derivative? Um, two. two comes oh, out the front and cancels. Plus, <laughs> I'm differentiating, 90 degrees. Okay, now just to finish, right? What is this thing? This is the gradient given any particular value x. Now, why is gradient useful to us in projectile motion land? It's because it gives us it, it gives us any angle you want, any angle you want. This m, this gradient is tan theta, not tan alpha. Alpha is an initial condition. <laughs> Mid flurry. Ten feet up, whatever angle you like. You know, draw some um, draw some particular moments in time, like this one, or that one, or the initial condition, right? You want to find your angle of inclination at any particular time? Just use the gradient. Because what this tells you is the equation of the projectile's path through the air, right? Without respect to time. I don't care what, what time you are. We call this the equation of path. Right? What is the thing actually doing through the air? Oh.